Hello, everybody. My name is Neil Sorensen. I'm a communication specialist with the Land Portal Foundation. And uh, today I'm here with Augustina De Luca, the network director of the Open Data Charter. Augustina has a long history of working for open governance. She has um, she worked almost for eight years at Directoria Legislativa, an Argentinian CSO that promotes legislative openness in Latin America. And she has specialized experience in issues of open government, transparency, and accountability, and has led national and regional advocacy projects and events. Um, in all transparency here, the land portal and the Open Data Charter are working together to develop an open up guide on land governance, providing a use case driven framework of priority land related data to make available and for supporting governance governments to commit to context appropriate steps and increase accessibility and use of land information. Uh, thanks for for being with with us today. Augustina. Um, yeah, we wanted to get a, a better understanding of, of uh, the open data charter and, uh, and your work on, on corruption. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. So we are a global organization that works with uh, data practitioner practitioners and governments that promote and that try to open up data while protecting fundamental rights. So we work, we have a, a network of 100, over 150 governments and organizations. Uh, and we work on some issues in particular and on data governance as a whole. My role in, is to support this global network and to create resources, uh, insights and connect governments among the, each other to share challenges, activities, ideas um, and success stories. In particular, we have been working through, oh, I'm sorry. We have been working on, um, on, on three areas, on, on climate change, on gender equity, and on anti-corruption. And in each of them, we promote the open, the specific data sets that should be made open by governments for making an, an, an open policy on those areas. And in the anti-corruption work with many governments, the, the issue of, of land tenure and land rights was um, identified as crucial for um, a good anti-corruption policy. So based on that, we have engaged with the land portal here uh, to develop an open up guide on land governance uh, to try to work with governments to open up data on how they are administering their own uh, land, um, their land policies that can then inform better decision making. Oh, thank you. Thank you for for that response. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, what do you think are the implications of of uh, of land corruption and governance? Um, do you have any any personal ideas and experiences with uh, that you could share with us today? What have you seen in the initiatives and projects that you've worked on? So uh, at, the, at the first time we've seen that it's not an area where many governments have information published, which is a challenge. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of uh, information around budget, around public acquisitions, around uh, employment, around uh, salaries, uh, around uh, either extractives at some point, but not about land tenure, land rights, land use, uh, land development information. And that is crucial because not only to know who owns what, but also where we have protected areas where we can't allow uh, to construct or that we have to have sp special treatment for them where we have environmental uh, issues that we have to protect that area um, about taxation about exemptions around permissions for building in the cities around um, planning around uh, expropriation uh, activities so all these make 
of a good um, make and an, an, an are clearly related between public private decisions. Uh, in all of these, we have private companies that um, are involved in uh, the, their own businesses and that might be in touch with each. And then we have the, the public sector that should make policies and, and should make sure that the regulations and the, the activities in place are, are secured. So having information of all this might, might help citizens monitor, might help journalism create stories and narratives and inform the public on how the policies are being implemented. And at the end, it actually, it's, it's about um, letting people know how we, how the decision, are, are, how the, the, the government is implementing and allocating its budgets and in how we are, they are protecting ourselves um, based on the re regulations in place. Now, why do you think uh, land corruption is so prevalent? I mean, you know, we hear that it's one of the, besides uh, police departments, that it's the most common form of, of corruption that exists. You know, why, why is this the case? Do you have any insights uh, on, on why, why this is and how this open up guide uh, is going to contribute to addressing this? very serious problem. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that um, the land corruption is it's clearly related to our everyday lives. It's uh, about uh, my neighbor of, of who owns the, each land or, who, on, 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 or in my city in particular. Um, it, 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 it might be I, indirectly affects me. So that's why maybe some citizens directly associate or don't trust some particular institutions that are more directly related to our everyday lives, but it definitely affects um, urban, urban or rural planning and its effects on how, um, I mean, uh, it, and it disproportionately affects the most vulnerable groups or those that have less resources to mobilize to monitor, to advocate, or to communicate. Those that have uh, the, the most poor, the, 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 the women, um, those, those vulnerable groups and marginalized groups are disproportionately affected by uh, bad land governance um, administration. So we believe that working with governments and having this resource that, it's, that we're going to be named uh, that's going to be named around an open up guide on land governance. We, we, we believe that by working with the governments in, in trying to address the particular problems and challenges from that, that, that region, and by opening up data on how they are managing their own land administration, then it will help those the, the citizens from that region have more information uh, to monitor uh, how government is making decisions. But it will also help government in itself to have better information, more timely one, and because what in the process of opening up data, then you also uh, work on your internal data governance framework. And so for sure, in the process of implementing the guide, you also improve your internal inf data infrastructure. So by that, then governments will have more information and more uh, data, disaggregated data that can be used to inform their decision making process but we, we, we have to um, in the process of, of, of testing this guide we work with the local community not only with governments but with data users with journalists with organizations with communities interested people to discuss what are the local priorities what's the local context what are the key objectives what is the data that those data users are demanding and work together governments and the local community um, on opening up that information because then it will be clearly and directly used for the purposes that th those people were asking for. Uh, so we believe that building this community of practice of non-governmental -govern organizations, private companies, journalists, and governments, and those that are directly affected by a bad land governance uh, administration, then it will improve the, uh, the policy as a whole. 
Oh, thank you, Augustina. Very insightful. Do you have any sense of uh, of particular governments that uh, are ripe for targeting or that uh, you know might be open to this kind of this kind kind of guide? So we try to, um, when we implement the guides, we have a similar approach. We try to identify governments that are willing to open up data because at the end, this is of course a, 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 a project to open up information on land governance. So we identify those that have already a data framework in place at some point, either if they have land data open or not, but some point of a chief data officer or some kind of data infrastructure in place. And then of course that they have the political will to open up data on land um, information. Based on that, then we work with them from, um, we don't have a particular region of, of interest. Um, it, it's more about the, the interest from the government and where we have a, where there exists a local community that's interested in land administration and in land data uh, to inform their, their own projects or, or, or monitoring activities. So based on that, and, and with, after we engage with the government, then we work with the local community, as I was saying before, to identify the local context, the local challenges, and uh, the, the key objectives of uh, opening up that, uh, the recommended data sets, because the guide recommends a bulk of data sets. And of course, we have to prioritize with the government and with the local community, which are the most crucial for that context. So based on that first, uh, we'll make a workshop and based on that first um, interaction, then we work directly with the government in opening up those crucial data sets that were prioritized together. Wow. Okay, that's very interesting information. Um, do you have any other things you'd like to add uh, on uh, how uh, this work on opening up uh, land governance information will contribute to uh, reducing land corruption? Well, of course, uh, to fight corruption as a whole, uh, we need information. We need to know how decisions or are being made to identify capacity gaps, to identify potential areas of corruption. So now we don't have that much information globally on how land is administered. And so that opens up uh, gaps for, uh, for, for misuse of funds or for just don't knowing how decisions are being made, which permits obscure and illegal practices. So, by opening up this information, it will increase uh, people's knowledge on how governments are um, administering their the land information, and it will for sure improve the administration of, of, of that policy. Uh, so, I mean, transparency is a means to an end. Um, I think it's, it's generally the answer to fight corruption and, and to um, improve policy making and that actually um, brings more, um, more, more tra builds trust with the, the local community and that can, um, at the end, uh, be, have, a, a, as we were saying before, more, more equi equitable outcomes. Because if we have information and we involve the community at the beginning, then at the end, at the end of the process, we will have a better uh, democracy and a better, better governance framework that can bring the people at the center of the decision-making process. Bringing people at the center of the decision-making process. That sounds like a, a good outcome. Uh, just one last uh, question. Do you have a book or a, a podcast or a movie that you could recommend to our listeners, viewers, to uh, learn more about this, these issues? So I've been um, listening to a Latin American podcast, uh, which is, uh, it's organized by an, an Argentinian organization and they make interviews to specialized people on anti-corruption, either from the transnational point of view, from the journalism 
from the theoretical and philosophical uh, point of view, and it's it's really interesting. Uh, it's called Break the Wheel, and in Spanish is Romper la Rueda. I can share that later. Um, but it, it's really inspiring. I really like kind of the format uh, because it's not that common. I'm from Argentina, and it's not that common in Latin America to have uh, inspiring podcasts in Spanish around this uh, this topic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. We'll, we'll be sure to, to share it as well when we publish this interview. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Augustina, and thank you for sharing your perspective. We really appreciate it. Oh, well, th thanks to you for the hard work and for, for this interview. We hope uh, it, it's just the beginning of a global conversation and that actually improves um, the availability of, of land governance information.